What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to make a cold cast reproduction of this plastic bust of Abraham Lincoln. We're going to be using products today from a company called Smooth On. Now our first step is we're going to secure this plastic model onto a melanine board using hot glue. Once the model is secured, I'm going to put this Lazy Susan underneath the board. It'll help me rotate the model as I'm working with it. Next we're going to apply uh, Ease Release 200, which is a release agent, and we're going to spray a very light coating onto the surface of our model to help facilitate the release of our mold rubber from the model surface. For this project, I'm going to use a Dragon Skin 10 very fast. It's a platinum silicone from Smooth On. This is a two part silicone system. This is part A, and this is part B. Wear latex free gloves when working with silicone. Latex will inhibit the cure of silicone, so make sure your gloves are latex free. We're going to open up part A. I'm going to take a clean a stir stick and we are going to stir the contents very thoroughly. So make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom as you do this. We're going to do the same thing now for part B. Again, clean mixing stick, stir very thoroughly, scraping the sides and the bottom as you go. The mix ratio for Dragon Skin 10 very fast is 1 to 1 by volume, so you want to dispense equal amounts of part A and part B. First we're going to dispense part A into a clean mixing cup. Now for part B I mark the cup with a black line. This is important because both parts are translucent. This will help you keep track of the different materials that you're working with. Part B is now dispensed. The same amount of, as we did for part A. So you have equal amounts of A and B. Now we're going to color our silicone part B with Smooth On's Silk Pig silicone rubber color system. For this first layer, we're going to use the green color pigment. So I'm going to take this clean popsicle stick and I'm going to dip it into the colorant and I'm only going to use a very tiny amount, just this amount, to color the part B of our silicone system. Now I'm going to add part A to part B using a clean stir stick I'm going to scrape out the material into the mixing cup. Now we're going to use Thyvex. Thyvex is a thixotropic agent which allows you to thicken the silicone. We're going to use Thyvex in every layer of silicone that we're going to be working with today. It only takes a small amount to thicken the silicone. Once we've added Thyvex to the mixture, we're going to give this a thorough mix. Be sure to scrape the sides and the bottom as you do this. Now we're going to use a brush to apply our silicone material. Note I cut the edge. This helps to stipple the material onto the surface of our model. Dipping the brush into silicone, I'm going to use the short jabbing motion to push the material onto the surface of our model. Here now is our first layer. Note how thin it is applied to the model surface. We want it nice and thin to capture all the detail of our model. We're going to allow this first layer to tack up before we apply our next layer. For our next layer, we're going to use a Silk Pig Yellow. Following the same steps as we did before, we're going to add a tiny amount of colorant using a clean stick. Just this amount is enough to color the part B. We're going to add 5x to this layer and apply this to our model. For this layer, we're going to use just simple brushing. No, no stippling required here. We're just going to apply thickened silicone to create our second layer. 
Now for our third layer, we're going to use silk pig red. Again, same process. We're going to add a, a small amount of colorant using a clean stick, color part B, and add your Thyvex. For this layer, we want it nice and thick. Now I'm going to use actually a popsicle stick to apply the thickened silicone. Note how thick it is on this layer. We're going to use this to put on a, our final coat of mold rubber onto our model. Here's our final layer of thickened silicone applied to our model. Note that, the mo that we've also created a flange around the model, around the base of the model. We're now going to trim off the excess material on the base. And this is important because we want this to register to our support shell. So having a nice clean edge helps with the registration. We're going to trim off all four sides. Now also to assist with registration, I'm going to trim off the front two edges, giving it an angled cut. Again, this will assist with registration in our support shell. For our support shell material, we're going to use plaster bandages. This is Gypsona brand plastic bandages available from SmoothOn. We're also going to use Sonite wax. So the first step is we're going to apply Sonite wax, which is a paste wax that we're going to apply onto our mold rubber using a brush. The wax will smooth on the surface very easily. Make sure to cover all areas of your mold rubber, including the flange at the base. Next, we're going to prepare our plaster bandages. I like to use four-ply uh, plaster bandages. In other words, I'm going to fold this roll four times. I like to use a length of about 10 inches. So this is our first layer of our plaster bandage. Taking a pair of scissors, I'm going to trim it out. And here is your four-ply bandage strap. Now, we're going to dip the strap into water, remove the excess, and apply it directly onto our mold rubber. Pressing the plaster to the surface of the rubber, we want the plaster bandage to conform to the shape of the rubber. I'm going to repeat this process for the entire first half of my support shell. So I'm going to dip the plaster into the water removing the excess water by squeezing the plaster bandage and then applying the bandage onto the surface of my mold rubber to create my support shell. Make sure to extend the support shell at least a uh, half an inch or more beyond the rubber's edge so that the rubber can sit well in the plaster shell. Good. So here now is the completed first half of the shell. Next, I'm going to apply Sonite Wax again to the edge of the plaster. What we're going to do is we're going to apply the second half and it's going to overlap this first uh, half of the shell. So I want to apply uh, ample Sonite Wax to the edge to prevent the two halves from locking into each other. Be sure to apply an even coating of wax all along the edge of the of the support shell. Now we're going to repeat the process to create the second half of our support shell. Again, dipping the plaster into the water, removing the excess moisture from the plaster bandage, and then applying it. And we're going to overlap the edge here as we apply this second half of the plaster to the model. Here now is the completed shell. Note how it overlaps the second half. Once the plaster is fully cured, uh, we'll be able to demold them. Be careful as you remove this. It may take a little bit of work on the 
on the edging between the two plaster shells, but once you get that going, it's easy to remove. And here's the shell removed. Now we're going to apply a little baby powder to the mold rubber. And the reason we do this is because we want to facilitate the removal of our glove mold from the model. Adding a little baby powder to the surface um, basically uh, helps remove the tension from the surface of the mold rubber and it makes it easier to peel back. So now I'm going to take off our glove mold from our model to extract the original plastic model from the mold rubber. Take your time when you do this. You just want to carefully peel the mold rubber away to extract the model. With the original model removed, I now will reseat the mold rubber back into support shell. Note how the mold rubber sits perfectly registered within the support shell. Next I'm going to take some rubber bands to secure the two halves of my support shell to prevent um, the two halves from coming apart. I'm going to take this deli cup and I'm going to put my support shell inside it. This will help create a level surface so that I can pour my resin into the mold rubber. And now my mold rubber is ready for casting. For our casting material, we're going to use Smooth Cast 325. This is a two-part polyurethane system. This is part A, and this is part B. Note when working with this polyurethane system, you want to shake the material well before using. I'm going to shake part A. Similarly, we're going to shake well before using part B. We're going to first start with part B. I'm going to dispense um, into a two ounce container. Next, we're going to use uh, So Strong Colorant. This is a liquid urethane colorant system from Smooth On. It only takes a few drops of this colorant system to color part B. Taking a clean popsicle stick, we're going to stir the colorant into part B to color the material. Next, we're going to use bronze powder. Now this is real metal powder that we're going to dispense into a two ounce container. Now we're going to dispense part A. Now you should have equal amounts of part A, part B, and metal powder. Now we're going to mix part A and part B into a clean mixing cup. I'm taking a clean popsicle stick, we're going to give it a good stir. Be sure to scrape the sides and the bottom as you go. Give it a stir for about 30 seconds and then we're going to start sifting in the metal powder into the mixture. Once our resin is ready to pour, we're going to pour a small amount first into our mold rubber initially and we're going to slush cast. In other words, we're going to pick up the entire system and slur it around. This helps to push the resin through all of the detail of my mold rubber. We're going to continue this process and continue to swirl the material around so that we get nice even coverage throughout the entire interior of our mold rubber.
Next, we're going to mix up additional resin, coloring it with so strong black, and we're going to fill in the remainder of the cavity with additional resin to top it off. After allowing the resin to cure for about 10 to 15 minutes, it's ready to demold. Again, we're going to be uh, very careful in removing the mold rubber. Just work the rubber edge up and slowly remove the rubber from the model to extract our reproduction. Next, we're going to apply a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to the entire surface of our casting. The reason we do this is to soften the plastic surface a little bit and prepare it for polishing. Next we're going to use some steel wool to polish our casting and allow for that metal to really shine through. We're then going to apply some black shoe polish to our casting to further enhance the detail of our model. And there you have it, a cold cast reproduction of our original plastic. The metal powder looks incredible, and it has the look and feel of real metal.